Are you ready for lesson 34? Greatest common factor. All right, so we're going to do greatest common factor today, and we're going to take it farther than what you've learned in the past. In the past, you've done like greatest common factor between two different numbers. Now we're going to do uh, between two different algebraic terms, which we'll be using letters and exponents as well. So let's just talk about this for instance. If we look at the uh, factors of 210, the prime factorization of 210 would be 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. And it's good to be able to do that in your head, get to the point where you can do that in your head. You might think, okay, it was 7 times 300. Well, 300 is 3 times 10, so 2 times 5 is 10. So, or you could do a factor tree if you weren't sure. So those are the factors of 210. Let's look at the algebraic factors of 210xy squared z cubed. If we were to break that out into their pieces, it would be the same coefficients, or same numbers, and then we would have this. So they, there it is all broken out. Okay. Now we're going to use this idea to talk about the greatest common factor between two or more terms is the product of all prime uh, algebraic factors common to every term, each to the highest power that it occurs in all of the terms. Okay, So that might not mean anything to you, but the book is really good about introducing you to definitions written in a mathematical way. So it's good to start understanding what these mean. Sometimes you want to try problems and then go back to the definition and that will make the definition make more sense. So let's let's jump into an example. Okay, find the greatest common factor of 8z to the fourth m squared p minus 12z cubed m to the fourth p squared. What that means is find the biggest term that goes into both of these and what that means is, let's just start with the numbers. The biggest number that goes into 8 and 12 without a remainder. Well, the biggest thing that goes into 8 and 12 would be a 4. Okay, so we've dealt with that. We can even cross that out just for now. We're not going to usually do that, but I just want you to see. So we've dealt with our 8 and 12, and it's a 4. Now we're going to look at our Z's. What's the biggest, uh, the biggest amount of Z's that goes into both of them? Well, the, the biggest amount of z's that is included in both would be z cubed. The greatest number of z's in both. Okay. What's the greatest number of m's that go into both? It would be m squared. Couldn't be m cubed or m to the fourth because this stops at 2. Now we've got p and p squared. Well, they each have at least one p. So that is our greatest common factor, 4z cubed m squared p. So now let's go back to our definition and see what, if that makes more sense. The greatest common factor of two or more terms is the product, so this is a product, at 4 times z cubed times m squared times p. So it's the product of all prime algebraic factors common to every term. So these were, this was the prime factorization multiplied together, so we had a 4, and common to every term was a z cubed, common to every term was an m squared, and common to every term was a p, to the highest power that occurs in all of the terms. Okay, take a breath, and let's go to the second one. Find the greatest common factor of 4x squared y cubed z minus 8 squared y z cubed. Okay, we start with the coefficient out in front. What's the biggest thing that goes into 4 and 8? 4. So we've taken care of our coefficient. What's the greatest number of x's they both have in common? x squared is the highest power that, it, that occurs in both terms. y cubed, the highest power is only y, because right there. So this is the limit. The one with the smallest number is the limit. So z has the smallest exponent. It's a invisible one, so that's the limit, they each have a z. 
And there it is. Okay, now we've got three terms, so you've got to look across three different ones, and so it just takes a little bit more, you have to be more careful. So we have a 16, a 4, and a 2, okay? Well, 2 is the biggest thing that goes into all three of them. Then we look at our x's. We have x squared, x cubed, and x to the 12th power. So x squared is the greatest one. All right, now we look at y. y to the 1, or y to the first power. So we just write y is the biggest thing that goes into each of those. And p is just a p, is the answer to that. Okay, turn the page, and we have our practice. Now, we'll go ahead and cover up with the answers there just so I make sure. Go ahead and do these and check your answers in the book. If you get stuck, come back and watch the video and begin. So I see 6, 14, and 24. Well, 6 goes into 24, but it does not go into 14. In fact, 2 is the only number that goes in, only factor that goes into everybody. So it's a 2. Then we look for the biggest, or sorry, the smallest number of x's, really. x. And we have y cubed and m. Okay. Now we've got 5, 60, and 30. Well, 5 goes into all those. It looks like a squared is our limit, b squared, and c squared. They all at least have that many a's, b's, and c's. All right, I had to rewrite this because on my notes the first time when I made this video I had this written wrong. So here's the actual problem and I'll fix it on your notes before you see them. So I look and I see 12, 16, 28. Well, 4 is goes into each of those. And it looks like they all at least have one x. They all have at least one y. And they all have at least one p. And so there is the answer to that.